This is the basic of aquaponics and hydroponics for the Community Agriculture School Sustainability Program, CASP, for a hair. What we will cover today is the difference between aqua and hydroponics, types of systems, management requirements, types of plants to grow, sustainability, a short demonstration, and also questions at the end. What is hydroponics? Hydroponics is a type of horticulture and a substrate of hydroculture, which is a method of growing plants, usually crops without soil, by using minimum requirement solutions in an aqueous solvent. <clears throat> what is aquaponics? It's aquaculture and hydroponics. So basically at the left of the screen, you see a system with plants with a tank at the bottom with fish. The water is being recirculated to the bottom of the plants with rich nutrient dense water. The plants uh, provide also a safe haven to keep the water cool floating on rafts. The aquaponic side school on the right shows the fish, one, producing some type of waste or microbes. That microbes and worms convert waste into fertilizer basically for the plant. From there, their fertilizer helps the plant grow with about 13 different nutrients and the plants filter the water that return back to the fish. So it's creating a circular cycle. Aquaponics. It's the combination of aquaculture, fish, and hydroponics, water. Hydroponics and aquaponics. Hydro is basically growing without soil, substrate, without substrate, circular use of water nutrients via the water. So hydroponics is only water, no fish. If you look at the right of the screen, the lettuce is on a raft. This floating raft is also has a substrate, which is the white ball. The white ball sucks up the water and allows the nutrients to hit the tap roots of the plant. As you notice, the roots of the plant are white, which indicates that a plant is healthy, vigorous, and vibrant. Aquaculture and aquaponics. Aquaculture is simply breeding of aquatic organisms, fish, shell fish, crustaceans, and algae, and seaweed. If you look at the screen, you see these tanks. These tanks hold fish that are in them probably 400 to about 800 gallons. And these tanks uh, pretty much are recirculating from place to place using some type of water or plumbing system. So aquaponics and hydroponics do offer skills surrounding plumbing, engineering, hands-on designs, not just the science aspect. If you look at the, the right, the bottom right of the screen, you see shellfish farms. And also at the top right, you see seaweed. These are aquaculture type systems, similar to the environment and type of the ocean. So simply aquaponics or hydroponics is mimicking nature to some sense. The sustainable benefits of growing aquaponics and hydroponics, high yield, short cultivation time, less plant diseases, biological control, it helps with urbanization and less transportation, especially if you're in an urban city. Efficiency, circular water use, you will save up to 90% water using aquaponics, hydroponics. Water footprint, carbon footprint. If you look at the picture here, this is a commercial indoor growth system. This system is ran by Annie, which is an organization that is global for producing hydroponic systems. Tan Stock is the project leader of this organization. Tan is only 26 years old. This shows you that future careers in agriculture will be more technology web-based and also a younger generation of farmers using more sustainable methods. The digital divided increase comes is if you look at the iPad in his hands, he's monitoring the water usage and also the sensory of the crop's temperature, nutrients, defects, and lighting, all can be controlled handheld by phone. It's based off of Internet of Things.
So aquaponic systems with substrate are similar to hydroponic systems. They are all built the same. So if you look at these different manifolds that's releasing water and drip lines, it's all being controlled by a pump. That central pump sends in the water and sends it up. It's being aerated by our air stone to provide oxygenation. Overflow, if the system was to, will have a separate pipe that goes back into the reservoir. The middle part is your grow tray with rocks and you have an air pump with the stone connected. This is an example of a mini hydroponic system. You will see an example of this in the next demonstration. The types of crops you can grow are varieties of lettuce, mint, basil, pak soy, broccoli, peppers, tomato, cucumber, eggplant, and zucchini. Mostly, a variety of leafy greens and lettuces are grown in most aquaponics and hydroponic systems. Vertical farming. Vertical farming is using different types of structures and beams to grow up vertically. Also, you can grow vertical or horizontal. This saves less space and time. Systems like these will be able to grow thousands of heads of lettuce more than an acre inside a controlled environment vertical system versus inside of a field on one acre. Deep water cultures are systems with pools of water. They're floating on rafts and the plants are being transplanted weekly, bi-weekly, and monthly on these boards. Some systems can have fish on the bottom, as you see in the right, but they have to be covered with a netting so the fish doesn't eat their new roots. Sustainability and education. Shriek your word is sustainability. Reduce, reuse, recycle. We want to cut down on the CO2 carbon footprint that we're putting out in transportation. Less transportation calls for more local to local routes, mainly in urban areas. These will be some of the future careers and industries within urban environments. Also, they connect to the rural because they are minimized opportunity to grow that many crops. They still wouldn't be able to diverse to meet the demand of other crops or root crops per se. The water footprint is 90% less. Target groups are elementary, secondary schools, and high schools. Also, there are many research opportunities in STEM, also in science, business, entrepreneurship, and for a therapeutic part, you can be a hobbyist of aquaponics and hydroponics. You can conduct food workshops, food to the table, farm to table, seed to table. If you look here, you see this young lady dissecting a fish, testing water, and you can see at the bottom right, them actually cooking the fish that they raise and they prepare in the aquaponic system. And inside of their classroom, not only are they building aquaponic systems, they're growing food that they're selling inside the cafeterias. The present hydroponic farming today, going forward, we'll see a lot of shipping containers. They'll be built, repurposed to create mobile local farms allowing for produce to be grown in the area where it will be consumed, where typical farmland may not be available. Check out podponics.com for some of these pre-built systems. Why aquaponics or hydroponics? In 2050, we have 9.8 billion people to feed. The capacity of our planet is limited. Oceans are overfished. Aquaponics and hydroponics could be one of the solutions to our food problem. Not all of the solution, but one of them. If you have any questions, you can email me at judgepeaches at pvamu.edu. Thank you, 4-Hers, parents, and families. Uh, my name is Jeremy Peaches. I'm the 4-H and Youth Development Extension Agent for Harris County. This is the Community Agriculture School Sustainability Program. We used to teach kids about numerous sustainable growing systems, different agriculture projects with entrepreneurship focus. This program is part of the Healthy Houston Initiative. Check out the ongoing videos and also demonstrations following this. Look forward to lesson three, four, and also five.
Thank you for Hers. Herb system. It's inexpensive, $20 to $25. You can have a setup to be able to have herbs year round. So, what you're going to do is go to Walmart or Home Depot and buy one of these three, four dollar cases. And what you do is you take the top and you cut the holes off one, two, three, four, five, six. And also, a small hole. You buy an aerator from Walmart for about seven, eight dollars a battery. And what you do, you get an aerator extension in the ball. These cups, these grow cups, you can get them on Amazon, 10 for $5. And also you can buy these grow seedlings in the trade for $10 on Amazon again. So you can go to Home Depot, Lowe's, or even Johnny Select the Seeds, buy you some seeds packs. You might want to use cilantro, basil, parsley, coriander. So those are the different type of herbs find you an organic liquid fertilizer to put in it mixed with water so what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our bucket we put our hose in there we're gonna stick our trays inside the hose that we drilled one two three and you can also pre-start some lettuce or some herbs stick them in there bam Two, three, four, five, six. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take these seed plugs and put them in here. So whatever seeds you want to start, put them in there, or you can pre-start them. So I gave you two to look at. One with a plant I already started and one from seed. So what you next step is taking your water putting it in we're gonna fill it all the way before it gets to the top because what we want we want those seed trays and plugs to be able to catch that water you're gonna take your aerator and stick it in that's what we're gonna keep out keep it clean pour a little bit whatever organic liquid fertilizer that you find just pour a little bit every week or two weeks just add you a little a little liquid fertilizer there we go right there. Just take the top, stick it on, put it in a window seal, or set it down under some light. $20. You have your whole mini hydroponic herb set up. Every time you want to cook some vegetables or cook some meat, you want to grab some herbs, some basil, anything, you just come over and pick it. So I already have a preset up that I made. Right here we're doing watercress and lettuce. Again, man, one aerator is fueling two. I didn't even spend 20, $20 $25 on all of this. And this is some basil here. We already been working on that. See the roots at the bottom? So in about two weeks, man, this basil and all this will be grown and big. And we'll be able to eat it. We'll be able to use it for our airs. Hey, continue. I know I'm the one of the extension agents for Harris County for Prairie View. Um, so it's me and it's Jaren Small. So Jaren Small and I, and I basically facilitate 4 H programs all throughout Harris County, mainly dealing with underdeserved youth for Prairie View and the University. We offer like a lot of project based programs and ideas that kids could basically start building whether it's for in-school programs, after-school programs. 
uh, program that Jiren and I has had for the past year is the CAFS program, which is the Community Agriculture School Sustainability Program. So this particular program, what we always um, done has gone through our 4A schools, teaching kids how to grow food, you know, using the systems that they had to have around their house, also teaching uh, leadership and entrepreneurship ideas that kids can have. Now that school is going, I'm going to be out for a while, there's going to be projects that the youth need to work on or have to work on so they can continue to have these cognitive skills or just different projects and outlets to have outside of just television and staying in the house. So uh, a huge and major thing that happened recently when food uh, or when the coronavirus happened, COVID-19, was food security and food access was kind of limited. Everyone had to go eat or find resources that they needed at one specific time some resources weren't available. It started to become a supply and demand issue. So just so the youth in our 4-H clubs or youth period um, have, can have access, but also learn you know, viable um, skills as in science, math, also engineering, we want to teach them how to grow their own food. So soup food insecurity is very, very important and knowing how to grow your food is important. So today we're gonna to focus on uh, three different growing systems or really two different growing systems, but one way like how to seed and after that or before that uh, relatively, we're gonna let you know what the Cooperative Extension Program is. So the Cooperative Extension Program started in like in 1890 when they started the land grant programs and the land grant programs are throughout your two different state schools, Texas and m and Prairie View and m So the Cooperative Extension Program has four different um, program areas that they work on. They get their um, information from NIFA, and NIFA is the National Institute of Food and Agriculture. So they kind of set the mandate and support different land grant programs and programs that's all involved in, you know, nutrition and agriculture entrepreneurship, family, consumer sciences, or wide array of things. So these programs have literally been etched into the, the society of almost every state in America, if I'm not mistaken. Also, it's a few in um, the Caribbean and overseas. So 4-H has, is one, has one of the longest, oldest land grant programs has been here for a while. An extension system has been here for years. So. So just to tell you a little bit about um, what we do as far as um, in the county, again, is just working with kids, working with you, creating 4 H programs. So, first thing I kind of wanted to talk about, a system I wanted to talk about is hydroponics. So, I'm going to flip the camera. All right. So, hydroponics is basically saying water hydro ponics as in systems right so there's different type of ways to grow hydroponics and different type of things to grow but all what's happening in hydroponics is the water is consistently being recirculated but you have the opportunity to add organic nutrients or it's for some people inorganic nutrients to be able to grow that particular crop or plant so hydroponics, this particular system is a, a vertical aquaponic system, right? So that means it's stacked up. It has three different levels. Every bar on this plant, I mean, every raft inside of this plant holds water in the inside. And there's about nine plants on each one. So this one, this one, this one, this one, this one, this one. It's all being recirculated consistently right now the, the how the way you could grow using this system is basically you have these netted pots i think i might have another one here this is, all right these netted pots well these pots which they were pretty much inexpensive i think it has the price on there it's 15 cent 
So these pots, you able to grow seeds in, in, inside of this. You don't need soil. You don't need everything you traditionally need when you're usually growing. So what happens is you take things like a substrate, like cocoa corn. Alright, this is cocoa corn. It stick together. So when you plant a seed inside this substrate, it's gonna germinate in like one to three days, the week at the most. And when it germinates, the seedling comes out. The plant gets about this size. Let me find one. You see, that's a little seedling. That's two or three weeks. But what happens is the plant gets bigger and also the roots, they continue to grow and attach. Look at those white roots. White roots is a sign that you have a good healthy system. So the water is steady recirculating through these pipes and organic nutrients or composting nutrients or compost tea. So after two weeks, you have something like this and it grows to the next level. It's something like this, that's kale. It's lettuce. But you also have the ability to transplant. So say if you had a plant that was already bigger or that was already growing, you specifically just take this plant, place it, wipe the roots off, place this plant inside of this system, and the system is going to continue to keep recirculating nutrients to the roots. Yeah, let me see. You just set it back in there. So this method of hydroponics is not new. It's kind of actually been around for like years. It's been around since, I mean, basically the beginning of our civilization when they started creating rice or growing rice inside of paddies on fields or the Aztecs grew on different cliffs, All right? So this system is also good because you're able to count specifically how many plants you have and also how many, uh, um the growth of them you know they're not all bunched up they're not uh you know just so compacted where they don't have room to continue to grow most of the things that you can grow in these systems are herbs and leafy greens like this is a red oak leaf, leaf lettuce this is some swiss chard some bright lights some more oak leaf lettuce um experiment with a tomato plant or a tomato i mean or a pepper i mean a bell pepper so now I have lettuce here that's been transplanted, some more Swiss chard, some more kale, some more lettuce. So it allows like a lot of diversity. But at, what we mainly do is we just pick a little bit every now and again. Or if we want to make a, a few salads throughout the week, we cut it and it comes back again. This is oregano. This is cilantro. This is more thyme. So you're able to actually incorporate uh, herbs within using this system. So this is more Swiss chard and oak leaf lettuce, but now I'm experimenting with a tomato using this particular hydroponic system, all right? So this has been in this, inside the system for about three weeks, and within this three weeks, it's getting to this size, all right? It started from a ceiling or a baby. So tomatoes, they usually take about 60 to 65 days to get together two weeks. So we have about a month or so to go and they're like bright lights, cherry tomatoes. Also, we have onions inside of the back of the system. All right, so these are basically some just wild onions that we found um, at while we were doing a forage camp and we put them inside of the system and they've been growing in lush ever since. So. Thinking of, of growing in hydroponics, period, is basically it's the same thing as growing with soil, except you can add your own organic nutrients, you know, your own compost. You know, it's cleaner, it's more efficient. You know, you you're able to grow more vertically, going up in less space than say if you had 90 plants all over this whole area. 
which is nothing but a, a four by six porch. All right? So here are some more collard greens. All right? Lettuce. So growing all these different ways, hydroponically, vertically is good. So this particular system, this was, this was created by a 4-H teacher. And also when he donated this, this particular one offline from Amazon, we built a base, a two by three base, all right? A pond liner, the water, which is more sustainable because if you water the plants 24 seven all the time, or you don't have a chance to water, it's kind of hard to like maintain your system or your plants. That's the like number one or two reason most people fail or most use fail when they're growing plants because I forget to water or I might water too much. So having some type of sustainable system that's recirculating consistently and that also you can incorporate technology like um, cameras that you can watch or different sensors that you can use um, while you're on the go that you can use on your phone is actually cool also. So this hydroponics is not old, but going forward, just as, that sustainability wise, education wise, working with youth inside of schools, they're going to be the leaders of growing in a different way, but still incorporating the traditional ways that we learned from our grandparents or that we've done over a period of time. So this bag is also biochar and compost. So most people who grow commercially on, on hydroponics, they use some type of inorganic nutrients. This is just an organic way, a natural way of, you know, consistently having nutrients or, or minerals flowing through your system. So this bag of biochar and compost is being pumped up through probably a two or three gallon horsepower pump. The tube is coming up from the top, coming back down, flowing. One, two, three, and it's coming back. Now I accidentally messed up the tip, but of course, you know, if you don't have it, find it. If you can't find it, make it. And now it's flowing back. So this is a true recirculatory system. So for a household of like two or three people or individuals that have youth that want to grow some plants that may not, you know, have four to five acres or they stay in an apartment or a condominium, you still have the opportunity to grow and you still can grow on a, a small scale. All right. Now this particular system, is a vertical hydroponic system as well. But another great thing about it is you can connect both of the two to be in aquaponics. So instead of just using straight water with nutrients, you can actually incorporate some goldfish inside, some small koi. That way you wouldn't have to be able to particularly maintain add nutrients to the system. The fish and the fish waste will be filtered and it will be consistently recirculating throughout the system. Now this particular system is a good also because though this is more like a horizontal vertical, this is like a true vertical, like going up and down, right? So this system is a mini grow power GTX. It's a Generation X type uh, grow deal that the, the designer created. So what's happening in this system is, yes, it's hydroponics as well, right? And you have the water at the bottom, you have your reservoir tank, but you have all these side compacted holes, all right? Preset, all cool, all food grade. Now inside of these holes, it's about a hundred different spot planting spots for you to grow, all right? And it's a taller system as well that's higher. Well, what's happening in here is the pump from the middle console is being ejected through the top. And then it's coming back being distributed all four ways where you're able to control the temperature. I mean, not the temperature, but the, the flow of the water, right? You can increase, I mean, 
so you got water come outside you gotta kind of slow it down or you can decrease with a cool flow now it's not actually the system itself but it's what's inside of it growing basically in different type of soils or different medium of substrates hydroponically or aquaponically it needs some type of media in the middle to hold it so it's not just straight soil right this is more like compost, cocoa core, bud, bud, bird netting, all these different things that the plant can hold on to that you can either plant a seed in or you could transplant a plant. So these different onions here, they're consistently being watered. I, I picked these wild about two, three weeks ago and transplanted them. So you could literally cut off these and continue to cook with. Let's put it back in the hole. The water is already in the inside. So it's gonna continue to bub. You can continue to cut or either freeze or make you some plants. So, you know, growing in these systems, it depends on much size and space that you have. But you don't necessarily, if it's just one or two people, you don't necessarily need a huge operation. You just, you know, have some food where you could stay safe for yourself, for the family who else are in the house, or either freeze, or put something in the refrigerator to snack on. But this pump and these type systems, they don't require a lot of maintenance. Again, it's all water inside of here. Water being recirculated. Nutrients being added. All right. So, different type of soil conditions and fertilizers is all organic. And also, what I notice about these two systems, especially when working with youth, they love it because they actually can design and build and make their own. You know, growing from small, uh, in small spaces, you kind of have to adjust and do more numbers with what you pretty much have. All right, so growing aquaponically and hydroponically is something that I always love and something that I love teaching. So, to move on to the next thing that, or uh, next system that's important to pretty much growing, especially if you stand in an apartment in urban areas and also 4 H U, is growing in these pots and containers. So inside of these pots and inside of these containers, you know, you usually have them around the house. Your grandmother always had them. You can purchase them at a store. I mean, they're pretty much inexpensive. But growing in these pots and containers is a good way to grow herbs. And growing herbs outside of, you know, what you usually, what you, uh, usually purchase in the store is kind of a much fresher or fragrant. You know, if it's been, been in the store, it's been in the store for a few days. But... For people who also want to see you grow alternatives for medicine or youth that want to research alternatives for medicine using sp certain specific herbs, this is a good way and good system to type of grow in containers of pots. So this is thyme. And thyme plants, they're pretty much a year-round plant. It's more so for culinary aspects. It's... Um, has all kind of different uses and I want you guys to look up most of these uses or write them in the comment box or just give everybody else an explanation while I'm making the video but and this is rosemary I'm rosemary cutting so this cutting came off another plant you can just take plant certain plants or certain shrubs or woody species you cut the tip of them um, repot them in some type of potting soda and water long as they have a certain amount of soil, water, and sunlight, um, it's a 50-50 chance they'll come back. But it's an easier way to uh, allocate or get more plants without necessarily spending a lot of money. This is more time. This is sage, right? A young squash plant, I'll just plant it in here. Some more rosemary with this mint. Mint is another thing that grows year round perennially, not like not like an annually. 
and the mint. I mean, I wish you could see it through video. It has a lot of fragrance and it grows really fast. So for youth who may want to sell at farmer's markets or, you know, one day, instead of growing at home for yourself for food security, you may want to grow, grow, you know, for personal use. Uh, this is just some good herbs to grow, but also medicinally is some great herbs to grow. Now growing into these type pots, it's better to use soils that have different aeration in it. Like this soil has these perlite pieces, these white pieces. They help with the water flow, keep everything kind of loose, not so compacted. All right, this is another experiment. And so, man, sometimes gardening is, is really a lot of experimenting. For forage you, make sure you get, reach out to us if you don't have the curriculum, and we can help you get some of the curriculum on how to grow some of the junior master gardener programs that break these things down. But a lot of these is just projects and research. Like this is cocoa core, or another substrate that can be used. So don't be afraid when you're gardening to, you know, mess up or try out some things. It's all research, all right? So you can grow herbs in these different type of containers. Give me a second. Now this is something. This is an ornamental. And these ornamentals, I broke one. But these ornamentals grow inside outside you can now you can replant this also it kind of just broke off you see just stick it back i smushed it let's get another one All right. that's another revenue stream or a person or a personal hobby someone can get into you know just replanting repotting plants selling plants think about having a nursery you know, it's very expensive. So this is a nice ornamental that, again, if it breaks off, it can be replanted. It continues to grow. It grows year round. Um, also another possible revenue stream or forage club project that youth could have. These, more cocoa core. This is literally like the husk of the cocoa that we drink. You could grow using this. This, I know somebody know what this is. It's an ivory plant. And this ivory plant is almost in everyone's grandmother's houses. But this is another plant that grows year round. It can be uh, inside or outside. Always lush and green. Doesn't take much to water. See, look, I planted some of those some more uh, on the orchids using this and they just continue to grow but these are more viney right like the mint they're more viney so you can trellis them or you can keep them out let them grow as a bush all right mr terry green let's see roselle seedling let's see oh roselle This is Roselle Seedling. Roselle Seedling. I received it from Mr. Ted Green. And this is Roselle you can make teas with. A sorrel. A popular drink. And also another opportunity, a revenue stream that you can, you know, you may want to get in the juices of value added production. So growing these on the small for your home is very important as well. But growing them. Um, one day looking at it as a forage club project or or opportunity for somebody to make some second income on a commercial scale is, is great. But it all starts with like research. You gotta look it up. These are more like wild onions. You can just chop up, place in bags and freeze. I just broke them or I replanted. Anyone know what this is? I really wish you could smell it. 
This is Cuban oregano. A very, very, very fragrant herb. Real pungent Cuban oregano. So I want somebody to look up Cuban oregano and its health benefits. And put a comment in the box if you can. I'll show you how to replant this. This, aloe vera. So this aloe vera, you can use for like scars. Also as a like hydration for your hands, for your hair, different oils. So this grows year round also, but it's another great thing to grow in pots, like consistently. This is like a mini elephant ear. And sometimes people ask like, what are the different like plants you could grow that you can can grow together? It's called companion planting, right? So when you companion planting, you plant crops and things around each other that's not necessarily um, in the same family, but they grow well together. But also again, research is, is very, very important, right? In diversity, because sometimes plants or even like growing naturally, they love different plants around them, right? What can we plant with limited sunlight or a balcony? This, more ornamentals, right lion tail <laughs> so growing more ornamentals is something you can grow with limited sunlight few shrubs aloe vera is. uh this rosemary and lavender is something else that you can grow with limited sunlight yeah lion's tail this is mine still. This is another thing that I just learned about from Mr. Terry Green. So, for everyone who missed the first 30 minutes, I'm going to stop and fall, pause before I move forward. So, this is a, a class about food security and using different growing systems. We started off um, showing about aquaponics and hydroponics, different vertical growing systems and how to maintain them. And then we went to container planting and growing different herbs in a container. We transitioned to ornamental growing and now we're back on growing multiple um, varieties of herbs, plants, shrubs together as one. All right. So another thing you see is like this dead plant this was an indian paintbrush that i like found in different trees i was just trying out but sometimes they die out and you have different bugs right so integrated pest management having some type of plan for bugs or using certain things is very important and certain things you can make or use plants that you can use to stop or slow down like bug growth but they have different insecticide soaps right that you can use and they have different soaps that you can make all right in pots they range growing in pots range see that's an old pickle jar this is a smaller potting plant this is not clay this is more like a styrofoam version this is more of a adobe made clay bucket but this five gallon or three gallon um pot it also grows different things in them in the water space or different varieties so you have this onion and this diverse um, growing systems my here's what i'm really really proud about and talk about is getting ready for the next seasons so right now we're transitioning into the spring, where it's already spring. And certain things grow well or better in certain seasons. And some of those things are most of your tomatoes, your peppers, your squashes, your okras, a few more herbs. 
Uh, this is a big beef tomato plant. And growing in tomato plants on most of these plants, um, they don't take much, but they usually start in these smaller pots. Like you start them in these small pots. And once they get big or you can purchase them, we'll just buy the seeds and start them in a starter pot like this. And these three packs or one packs. You transition it to a, a, like a one gallon pot. And then when I get in a one gallon pot, you put your soil in. If you want to start from seed, it's, it's all right. Uh, it usually takes another week or two to your harvest date. But in a, for a tomato plant, it's usually 65 days, 50 to 65 days before it's fully ripe. But here's a transplant, like a big beef, a better boy. Now, all these pots were like pots that were just laying around or going to be thrown away. You can turn and put holes in these things so the water can flow through. And you can add water to them, you know. We're adding water to them. The water has a, a, the ability to flow through, keep everything safe and right. And that way the water is not sitting because what